So why do y'all think marriage is, is declining in the, in the Caribbeans? Truthfully, I don't know why it's like, because I don't see what else, what else do y'all have to do except not get married? Like why? It's not like you don't have to throw a whole million dollar wedding. The church is down the block from your crib. You can walk there. <laughs> why are we? They getting married, but they just getting divorced too. They used to stay married. Yeah. But that's, it's that true. can be said for any group of people on this yeah, earth. I was going like, to say like it's more. Ma- most marriages, not most. 50% of marriages end in divorce. And of that 50% of divorced people, 70% of the women don't want to get married again, while that number is only 30% for the men. So that gives you something to think about as to why people aren't getting married. So it's the women that don't want to get married. But... I mean, as a woman, when you get married... Do a set up. Do a set a woman, because I could speak from a friend experience. She's like my sister. Okay, she says she got married in January. She got divorce in March because of the guy. The guy yeah. was a whole pastor's son and he used to sleep with her models behind her back. That's what I'm and saying. As a woman, it's going into a marriage, it's a lot of stuff yeah, that you just got to take on the body. Her. He and I don't know her. if people want to do that anymore. And she found out it was heartbreaking and that discouraged her from getting married again. I don't, don't think it's that know. women don't want to get married. I think somehow... Y'all have managed to brainwash women Who's into y'all? thinking yeah. men. Oh man! So that's okay. So let me not. So okay, let me. I'm sorry. So he's like, Who's y'all? <laughs> um, no, but I think um, the narrative has somehow changed, mm-hmm. and I don't know where it came from that women feel like they have to compete for a man's affection. So I feel like men are sitting back, like, yeah, I, let me see what you're gonna do. For this and that, and like yeah, for and I'm, I'm, yeah, and and they and they'll keep that going for y- as long y'all as, compete as you let them keep. I don't compete, but what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying that's is that I, I, that's I, I, from no, what I can see. If every woman's saying they don't compete, where's this? Com- com- where's the competition? Like I don't get it. Every woman's, every woman I'm not competing. I'm not competing. Compete. Yeah, how, how are you guys getting the man? Nah, I, I, Welcome back to another episode of Daily Wrap Up Crew. No book up, I go by the name of Eli. As always, we got Ace with us. Yes, indeed. It's impressive if I make this shit run. I know I'm late, but greatness takes time, you know what I mean? Ace to go, too far. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, see, and this is why he be showing up late, just so you have these bum ass bars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That nigga rolled it in the big. Like, <laughs> greatness take time. You <laughs> said, I'm late. Yes. yes. Yo, last but not least, we got Jew. What it do, what it do, it's your boy Jew. I'm here on my crew. You know what I'm saying? Ace always late because he got to brush his teeth. Huh? <laughs> That's it. That was it. Like, yeah. what, oh, was the okay. what was the punchline? Like, yeah. something like. I mean, I got to keep it real. I had to keep facts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I already said I was late. You had to talk. <laughs> like, Listen, I, I was gonna say something else, but it was gonna sound crazy, so I had to stop myself. <laughs> I'd rather stop myself than to continue. Yeah, so. I mean, that, that's fair. That's fair. Like, that's fair. Anyway, we got some special guests in the building. Um, ladies, let them know where they can follow you at. Um, hi, my name is Akaya. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, A K Y A M A R I A, and also TikTok. Same thing. YouTube, same thing. So, yeah. Okay. Hi, guys. My name is Tia Chung. You can follow me on Instagram at Tia.Chung, T-I-A dot C-H-U-N-G. Same thing on TikTok. Holla at me. Mm-hmm. Hi, it's your girl, Dutch Banks. Mm-hmm. Guyanese girl here. You can follow me at D-U-T-C-H-B-A-N-K-S. Official chicken curry in the building. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Don't worry, it's two weeks. It's two oh, weeks. Oh, it's two oh, weeks. Oh, damn. damn, damn, okay. It's gonna be a long Last show. but not least, let them know where they can follow you at. I am Miss Diamond Natural, and my social media handles are Universal Diamond underscore Natural. Mm-hmm. I am the one and only American Guyanese yes. comedian. Yes. Representing for GT. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to GT, man. Like, listen, before we get into these topics, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, yo, subscribe to the second channel too, Daily Rebel uh, Crew Clips. Uh, that's where all the short form content going, the shorts, the, all the clips. We're right. leaving the main channel just for the main content, podcast, dumb, the exclusive content that we're working on. Like, I don't want to give too much away, but yeah. join the membership too. Like, you know, mm-hmm. ain't cop the merch. 
oh yeah, we all got the merch. I had to make sure, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Daily Rapper Crew.co. That hoodie clean. That hoodie is clean. Why you ain't bringing one? Are they complimentary for us? That's what I'm saying. We're supposed to have. Yeah, on Daily Rapper Crew. Gift bag looking. We leave it nothing, right? On Daily Rapper Crew.com. We need all the support we can get, you know what I'm saying? Yo, listen, um, Wolf, can we get into this first topic real quick? I could have capped a little bit, like, oh yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, you gotta I'm, keep it real, I'm, man. I'm, I'm, Matter of fact, I'll give it to y'all for half off. How about that? Ooh. See, y'all got support. Y'all supporting I'm the black business. <laughs> see, see, y'all, y'all stingy with the black businesses. That's all <laughs> I'm saying. Now, now we gonna look at y'all. Oh, let's, like let's, how y'all let's, looking at us? Let's get to this first topic real quick. We need to start gatekeeping carnival. There is no reason on this earth for anybody that's not from the Caribbean to be at carnival, and I don't care how y'all feel on the subject. Carnival is starting to get too commercialized for me. Yeah, I know I love Jada Wada, but what the fuck do her and her American friends know about Carnival? You're not from the Caribbean. You don't know the music. You don't know the people. You don't know the food. You don't know the culture. What are you doing at Carnival? A lot of y'all look at Carnival as just a way to dress skimpy and go outside and shake your ass. And the fact that y'all reduce our culture to such bullshit just because you want to post on Instagram. And then I'm confused because a lot of y'all that are trying to talk down, y'all come from cultures that are disrespected in every which corner of this earth. So where do you find the space to talk about what Caribbean people are doing? I feel like you need to be either a citizen of a Caribbean island or eligible for citizenship on a Caribbean island to be at Carnival, period. I don't care. Mm hmm So... Clearly, that was your post. You know I mean, it had it had these TikTok streets going crazy. Like, you know what I mean? So can you, can you explain um, the context behind that post? Because, when, you know, a lot of the, the divisiveness did seem like you were kind of attacking black Americans. You know what I mean? Because you did mention Jada Waiter. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So can you explain the context and, you know, for anybody that was confused about the post? Okay. So I made that post during Grenada Carnival, which is like jab, jab, all that stuff. And there was someone, he made a, somebody that was in Grenada, he was like kissing a skeleton, whatever, they was covered in oil. And the guy made the video and he was like so disgusted and like turning his nose up and like, what is this? How could they do this? And that's what that stemmed from. And it's also the fact that in Caribbean social media, there is a conversation about foreign influencers being used as the forefront of carnival. When I mentioned Jada Weta, I was talking from the perspective of her being an American, not that she was a black American, because why would it ever be that? Like, that doesn't even make sense. I'm very pro back, pro black. I love my black woman. I love that I'm a black woman. That's my favorite thing about myself. But I'm also from the Caribbean, and that's a big part of who I am. And I feel like it's one thing for you to appreciate a culture. You can go, you can watch, you can say, oh my God, this is so beautiful. I love this. Like, booty booty woo. It's another thing for you to participate and you don't know why you're participating. That mm-hmm. was my point. Mm-hmm. Okay. D- Dutch, how you feel about this? I think everyone could participate in Carnival because I love Afrobeat. And I love to go to Africa in concert. I don't want nobody to say I'm Caribbean, I'm Guyanese, and I can't go to a new Afrobeat concert because I can fight them. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was on the Ruga, I was at a Ruga concert and I was on stage with Ruga. I would never want somebody to tell me, oh, you should start gatekeeping or whatever, whatever, because they would remember me and bash me. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So I think everyone can be a part of everybody's culture. We're all one. We all live in this American country. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I think I mean, we could share. Mm-hmm. Okay, Dama, how you feel about this? Um, For someone who was born here in the States, and then I was raised in Guyana, which is considered part of the Caribbean. Let's get that clear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I think it's a great way to expose our culture and really bridge the, the two cultures between American and Caribbean. However, they do need to respect that this is our culture. And um, for Labor Day weekend, I posted a video from a TikToker because Brooklyn, where the West Indian, where the West Indian Day Parade is held annually, mm-hmm. has become the surrounding areas, Crown Heights. Um, they've become. Um, extremely gentrified. And so you have these people who are more or less 
visitors in our spaces trying to dictate how we could celebrate our culture. Mm -hmm. And that's where the problem comes in. It's like, we've been here, we made these neighborhoods what they are. You can either respect it or you need to go check into a hotel for the weekend Mm -hmm. because we're not about to change the way we celebrate. Mm -hmm. Um, I also think it's a big problem when they do come to carnival and then they start problems when we're just having fun. You know, they're being disrespectful. You know, they take um, whining and jumping up along the trucks as uh, an invitation to be, you know, disrespectful. And they do, they just don't respect the culture. So it's not that we don't want them there. Educate yourselves before you bring yourselves into our spaces. Mm-hmm. You know, because we don't want to... We don't want to lose the privilege and the right to celebrate our culture, you know? And I think a lot of people don't listen to understand anymore. Comprehension is lacking and they're just ready to attack Mm -hmm. instead of listening to what we're trying to say, because we are very loving people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We welcome everyone. But if you're not, if you're going to come into our spaces and not reciprocate or cause, cause it, cause our culture to be looked at and frowned upon, then, then, then we got a problem. <laughs> we, we got a problem. So I do want to get yeah. to, um, you know, in, in your video, you said that we should gatekeep carnival. So mm. what, what does that look like to you? To be honest, I don't know. Because I feel like in society as human beings, we have a tendency to want to include everybody and in everything. Mm. but you that's not sustainable for something like your culture. Like, mm. you can't just have everybody feel like they can have access to everything. Some things do need to be private, and they do need to be just to the people who it needs to be for. Like, yeah, that's how I feel. I don't know what it looks like because I don't put together carnival, so I don't know the scheme of how everything goes together. But I do feel like it's a lot. I think think that's it. You just said it right there. I think the organizers of Carnival need to be of Caribbean heritage. Mm. Like, I don't know if you guys saw the viral video of the Carnival in Nottingham. It looked like a cheerleading carnival. Did you yes, see that? I seen the video. Yeah, and so everybody yeah. was like crickets. Like, what are y'all doing? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, you know, it's just not acceptable. So I think when you don't have um, organizers of Caribbean heritage who can successfully gatekeep the culture, that's when it becomes a problem. But everybody is they're just looking at it as a money maker. Mm-hmm. They want to get in on the coin. Yeah, basically. like to me, I feel yeah. like it's more about the respect. Like as Tia mentioned. Like, I'm Grenadian as well. So Mm. I feel like job job in general is like kind of like seen upon as like the devilish, but that's not really the meaning. So I feel like people need to educate themselves more about it. Like instead of like, oh, that's disgusting. They're dressed all in black and Mm. they have snakes around them. They have all this like pigs and all this stuff. And I feel like that's just, you've got to educate yourself on these things before you participate and make comments about stuff like that. So yeah, Mm -hmm. I I think, um, you know, one thing about, and I think why your comment section was the way it was is because there seems to be this divisiveness that is going on in the diaspora, whether it's Africans or mm-hmm. you know, um, Amer- Black Americans or Caribbeans. Um, there seems to be this narrative of you know your culture is not you know as respected or you know we you don't have any culture. Like I've seen you know we had I don't African know why women. Why anybody says that? We have yeah. you know we had African women on the show who you know said that the parents, you know, look down upon black Americans a certain way. And I also mm. know Caribbean parents who have come to this country and, you know, stay away from them black people because they are X, Y, and Z. So, you know, how do we get to a space where we can just, you know, um, come together as African people globally without this division of this, oh, you're, I'm not black, I'm Jamaican or I'm, uh, I'm Guyanese. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I think it's just a human flaw because I even saw recently... On TikTok, um, it was a an, an Indian Trinidadian woman who said that um, Native Indians said that you know your ancestors may be Indian, but you're not Indian. We don't consider you Indian. Mm-hmm. So people always look. It's just um, it's just unfortunately as human beings, we're just always trying to find falsehoods to create a sort of a fake hierarchy. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because even between black Americans and Caribbeans, 
our cultures really, um, they're so intertwined. As you know, something so simple as I know Black Americans and Caribbeans, when you dream fish, that means somebody's pregnant. Mm -hmm. Everybody, that's a Black American thing. That means we could trace that back to Africa. Mm. The same thing to have rice and peas in your house on New Year's on New Year's Eve or day that mm -hmm. goes back to Africa. Mm. So it's just understanding. You know, we just have to be willing to sit down and understand each other respectfully. And it's something I talk about all the time. You don't have to um, be disrespectful to someone just to disagree with them and get your point across. Mm -hmm. And that, and unfortunately, social media gives everybody a green light to do just that. Right. Be disrespectful because they're cow. You know, they're behind. New, you can't see them. Right. So it's the coward's way out to say because they wouldn't say that to your face. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like I can it hear would be a totally different energy. I can hear. I can hear you saying that. But me coming. From me with my mother being an American black mm -hmm. woman mm -hmm. and my father being a Jamaican man from Jamaica, mm -hmm. right? I can say that my father's side of the family looked at black Americans a certain way. Mm -hmm. And they already had in their mind, whether they said it on social media or not, oh, Yankee this, Yankee that. That's mm -hmm. That's been a, a real thing. We could sit yeah. here and make it seem like it's an illusion, but all, all other groups of black people, which we're all black, Mm -hmm. Like, no matter, I don't give a fuck what island you from, which which forest you from, or whatever the fuck you from, we all are black. Mm -hmm. And we, we tend to look down on black Americans. You get what I'm saying? And yeah, I, I even hear people say, oh, well, if you if you go to, they're like, oh, we come out here and this, that, and that. And oh, um, you guys are lazy. This, that, and another. Oh, y'all don't do shit. Oh, y'all oh, just on welfare. When black people are not even the, the most on welfare. You get what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. this, this whole mindset of black people being lazy when we built America, mm. you get what I'm saying? And yes, you know, immigrants come here and get an opportunity, but it is a, a, a real slight on black Americans. It's just people come here from different countries and just look down on, on African Americans. Man, what... Because I'm always curious to know where do y'all think that comes from? Like this negative that's stereotype. That's a stereotype. Yeah, yeah that's that's just been pushed. You know, it's it's just a way to push this stereotype to give other cultures the green light to uh to be disrespectful towards Black Americans and also not to question the system if they put that if they push that narrative out there. Mm. So it's up to us to be strong enough to really blow past it. That would never change. Yeah. You think so? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People been fighting for that. Yeah, they've been fighting for, for But even when he was talking just now, you know, me being born here, there's sometimes when I'm just making a joke and I'm I'm American. I'm American. I have a, a nat you know, I'm not a naturalized citizen. Mm -hmm. And I'll make jokes like these American people. These and people look at me and I'm like, I'm just being I'm being facetious. I'm being funny. I'm being stupid. You know, so mm -hmm. it, it's just um it's just a running joke. For me, but I know it's not funny. Right. Yeah, I know it's not funny. So, what's your thoughts on this? This whole diaspora war that seems to be going on in in, in our community. I feel like, like she said, it would not like change because being like my parents are both from Grenada. They came here in the like eighties and nineties. So, what he was saying about how they think that black people are lazy does like resonate with me because I've heard that a lot. But mm. obviously, as me being a first generation American, like I don't really obviously agree. But I don't know. Like, I don't know what can change it, to be honest, because I feel like it's a real stereotype that we just cannot change, obviously. And even if we try to change it, I think that it will be, like, a way... I don't know how to put it in words. Like, having all three of us together, like, Africans, Caribbeans, and Black Americans would be, like, such a powerful thing that it's not something that the world is even probably um, ready and, for. And that's exactly why they show us the way they're showing us. Mm -hmm. Because they don't want us mm -hmm. together. Exactly. So yeah. they push the media too. out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the people in other continents is learning about America from what? The media, media. the movies, yeah. all yeah. that shit that they're pushing mm -hmm. out there. So when they come here, they already got this yeah. preconceived yeah. notion that, oh, they they thugs, they mm -hmm. they not civil, all this other shit. And, and that's it's just ignorance at the end of the day. You got to take time and get to know people before judging them. Yep. And yep. you, you got to bring that respect that she was talking about. Like, every, everything that you approach, it got to be respectful. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. fair. Um, and I love that we had this conversation. Like, you know what I mean? Because we do need to have these these spaces to have these conversations mm -hmm. more. 
Um, That's how it starts. Yeah. So to get yeah. into this next topic, mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of talk recently <laughs> with uh, Black American women who are saying, you know, they're frustrated with the Black men in America, obviously, and they want to get them a Caribbean or, um, well, specifically, <laughs> they want to get them a Caribbean <laughs> man. So <laughs> what, advice, to work. Exactly. <laughs> what, what advice do you have for wow. Black women looking to date Caribbean <laughs> men? Don't. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was about to say. Don't. Like, why? Why not? It's because it's a different level of manipulation and lies and just it's like they 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 love you so good like they will have you so convinced that they love you and this is and it's just a completely different person as soon as he turned the corner like it's so scary it's almost unbelievable yeah they got steak on them Caribbean men is trash. That's what I was. I was. <laughs> you to have to build you gotta get stamina. You gotta get enough energy, enough strength with you with them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Especially yeah. Jamaicans. I was. You I took know the words out my mouth. Out. You took yeah, the words out my mouth. No, I had one. I mean, I want no more. <laughs> they they just had a um a viral video about that too. What? A, Jamaican a, a, man? a woman. She said she left. Jamaican men to deal with a Nigerian man, mm. and a Jamaican woman stitched the video, and she goes, "It's my sister. They they both members of <laughs> Satan's army. You <laughs> left the ancestor for the. It was so <laughs> funny. Yeah, exactly. yeah but I mean, I get what she's saying. It, so okay, so from what I can ascertain, being American born. And being able to comfortably navigate between the two cultures of American and Caribbean. American men, the, the, the saying is that they treat their wife or wifey, she gets everything. She gets the love. She gets the money. The side chick is, you know, just to get his shit off, basically, and to run away from his problems. The danger with Caribbean men is both. that they love everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody, yeah. everybody yeah. getting the yeah. same yeah. amount yeah. of money. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody bills getting paid. What? Everybody's getting a Sound holiday. Like a great man. He spent... Mm. You see? <laughs> they get a lot of Jamaican in the Christmas with everybody. He's spending Christmas morning with you. He's spending Christmas dinner with you. And, and so they went to Sound like a man that like, could navigate with time. Continue. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So that's why they think, you know, they want Caribbean men because they are excellent providers. Mm-hmm. Caribbean men are phenomenal providers, but they taking care of everybody. They could walk though. They're they, independent. <laughs> like, tired of the, you think they, they got 10 jobs because they want they to? Could no. They got to take exactly. care of Suzette what? and Bridget Suzette? and Carol. And they they got to pay everybody. Right. They got to take care of everybody. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And they will tell you, you know, they that you, you they can have their wife and they telling the side chick, they, I better not mm-hmm. see another man around here because I'm paying and all agree the bills. And agree to the selfish. That's the game. Mm. You, they, 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 they like, like why you like? Yeah. Yeah. He looking at me like she know too much. Yeah, <laughs> they don't want to deal with nobody, but they give him blow. Yeah, you mustn't exactly. get nobody. You must, you must deal with he, and he deal with your wife. Yeah. Yeah. Sound like he's honest. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, hey, ahead. if if that's you what you, so, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just telling y'all everything y'all said. We can take it right back to if if that's what you with. You yeah, got if you he's wear. honest with you from day one, you got to respect lucky. it. I'm you're just saying lucky. that's all I got to say. So you think you lucky. should be able to have another man in the house that he paying bills? Watch, 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 watch. Watch I mean, the trini. If you want to pay the bills, mm-hmm. watch pay the that trini. Bills. Watch like, the trini. I, I just, I just, me, I'm, I'm very independent. <laughs> Once I pay me bills, he could never run my show. Mom well, saying if he is paying your bills, if he pay me bills, <laughs> yes. he would never. No Caribbean man, not me, because I know where we're gonna go. <laughs> yeah. I know my place. <laughs> No, I go. Uh, she got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you will never hear Caribbean men saying you got to go 50-50. They don't want none of that because. The, the their means control. to keep you in line is mm-hmm. to take care of you. Exactly. Some of That's them. That's just what it is. Some. Some. Exactly. I, I, don't know, I don't know about the ones really I give They're older, that. the ones I deal yeah. with. I don't know about them. You see, you there's the, 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 the ones in with time? Yeah, I don't know about hey. them, them new age ones. I wish I buy you time. <laughs> <laughs> the new age ones? I wish. I'm not going to say Nah, these. The me, the me. I'm not saying I want y'all to get y'all shit on for you. I'm saying like. Now you got to be lucky to queer. I mean, you ask the question. So, yeah, I'm listening. So, like, I mean, so where do y'all go from here then? So, since Caribbean men is so bad. Exactly. I mean, where, where do y'all go We from didn't say they were bad. bad. We just said you got to buckle up. Just, yeah, y'all didn't say they was bad. No, she did say they were trash. Didn't she said you didn't trash. I she didn't said think, that. <laughs> I feel like I'm readily equipped to date a Caribbean man because I'm a Caribbean woman. Uh, mm-hmm. I am you in this body. So whatever you want to do, 
I can do it, it too. Mm-hmm. I can do it worse, actually. Yeah. Ooh. That's the savage. I don't think but Caribbean the women say that up front. I y'all might, y'all might sneak in the back. I don't, say, I don't lie. Y'all be we quiet. We need to see what you're on first. If you play, then I play. But if you don't play, I won't play. Mm. I don't know. I, I I spoke to a lot of Caribbean men. They don't they don't speak too highly. We just told you they're lying. Yeah. Which one? <laughs> they lie. Huh? They it's will really... sell you a dream because they want you. They want you get the Caribbean girl. They want you steal. <laughs> <laughs> they want you take me away from you. Also oh, possible. They know what to do. What, it. They're what did very you hear? Jealous. No. I mean, I heard that. <laughs> Some of these women, you know what I mean? Caribbean women they ain't loyal. They have hey, a baby on you and it'd be a, a whole nother man's baby. What? But they lie to you. Like, you see? Like, where are you from? I'm just, I'm Hello, just saying. Most they be Caribbean speaking. men don't take care of the children. I was just about to say, most not, of the Caribbean not, men don't take care of the children. Wait a minute. Not the men who got families on what? different continents. They didn't tell you that. Yeah. No, no exactly. ain't no way. I, I got I to gotta backtrack, though. You said responsibilities. How, how do you pay your bills if he not taking care of his children? Y'all said Caribbean men pay up. Uh, Pay everybody they bills. Providers, so yeah. they got yeah. all these families. Some of them, some you would be lucky to find some of them, but the rest, they would make babies outside of the relationship. I won't even know. But yeah, you wouldn't even the know. Kids. They won't even know. Oh, that, shout out to my pops. Most of the Caribbean men. Yeah, most of the Caribbean men. There's a lot of men taking care of kids that he believes is his. Yep. That ain't his too, though. A lot of Caribbean men do that too. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they do. Take care and they step that's, in. that's one thing with Caribbean men. They would take responsibility from somebody else. Yeah. They would take yeah. responsibility for what? Somebody like, else's yeah, kid. Yeah, somebody yeah, else's child. Yeah, they will play step daddy. Well, shout out to them, my No wonder the black women want to go to them, my like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo. So let me get let me get to this next topic, right? Um, we already we got to that. So I do want to get to this one too. Um, about um, because I seen this article in Jamaica and how they were banning drill music because they said that, or just mu- illegal activity music because they said that it had an influence. Um on the youth and stuff like that, right? This is in Jamaica. I don't know about in all the Caribbean countries and stuff like that. Oh, so um, I, I really want to know what inf- um, influence do you think that, you know, genres like dance hall and, and drill is having on the younger generation? Wait. <laughs> Everybody's I don't know how y'all banning that. From We've back- been telling women to take buddy from <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, from what? Like, Babies telling baby. women to take buddy. So it's just like I, I'm gonna I'm gonna let y'all talk first. About you know? him selling drugs. What we talking? Huh? Like, Buju huh? has mad songs about him selling drugs. Like, what you mean? No, I mean, this is a new policy that Jamaica is. No, but I did, I did, how they, I did hear they were yeah, planning to yeah. ban dance hall in Jamaica. I did hear that. I, the, the I didn't know. Hall in Jam- yeah, the own music? Yeah, they were, exactly. So, but how after you know? after they said it, I didn't hear too much more about it. So I don't know. That would I never happen. It, it would be yeah, a riot. Yeah. Yeah. It would so, never happen. So basically, I what I want to get to with this topic, because, you know, in American culture, especially in hip hop, when we think about the the types of music that is heavily in rotation, um, whether it's with the guys, they talk about the illegal activities, how to disrespect women, mm. um, whatever the case is, and you see how that affects the generation. And now we even have, you know, the women in hip hop who are very much sexually liberated, and we see the in, impact that it has on the younger generation, right? Mm. You know what I mean? So this is why I wanted to relate it back to Caribbean culture, because when you think about dance hall music, there's an aspect that is very sexual. You know what mm. I mean? And these are these kids are growing up. Talking about I got a penis for your vagina, girl. They don't even know what that means, but they're growing up listening to this type of music. So do you think, you know, those specific genres do 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 they have the impact on like the younger generation growing up? Um yeah, I think it's the same, you know, even with when I was coming up with, you know, hip hop and little Kim and all that stuff. I just I think the problem now is that everything is easily accessible like it's at, at their fingertips with their phones mm. so before you know your parents you know they had a um, parental control and stuff like that so i think that's the reason why they're trying to rein it in as with anything i think it goes back to you know how you have to be your child's biggest influence so they could try to stop it all they want but i don't think it's going to change because it's all about what sells mm. you know mm-hmm. um so the, um, the 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 studios, the recording companies, and stuff like that. They're not about to make all this music PG. Yeah, yeah they, they're not because it's not going to sell. But but, but who's With controlling the- these? You know these these record labels that is pushing out that narrative. Like you know what I mean. You said it's not about the sell. 
these normally ain't people that look like us that's own mm-hmm. these record labels. Like, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. Well, it, so it, so you just exactly what you just said. It just went full circle back to what you said. It's the narrative they're trying to push out. Mm. Like um, I saw on TikTok. I don't even want to call anybody's name because I don't want to um, come across. They say, oh, you're, you're targeting a specific artist and you're bullying them. When I think what really needs to happen is you need to address the issue underneath the entire umbrella of hip hop, right? And so you had one woman call out certain artists in hip hop saying that they were industry plants designed to tear down the image of the black woman and all hell broke loose. Mm -hmm. I saw so many stitches. I think it ended up on the shade room. And so, you know, she was just basically saying that... um, this is a narrative that they're purposely trying to push to make it seem like black women are hypersexualized and, you know, they're not as educated because remember not too long ago, black women were the highest, the highest educated group in the United States. So now they have to counter that. They have to combat that and try to change the narrative that's out there. Like, oh, no, 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 they're not that smart. No, this is what they're really about. So we don't know who's writing these lyrics. I personally think they're despicable. Like, they're not, it's like, what are y'all doing? Y'all not even telling a story. Mm. <laughs> you mm. just talking nasty and you got a good beat to it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So people are calling that out, but the, the record labels are basically telling them, yo, if you don't do it, we're not going to push your album. Yeah, but you see how, um, you, I'm a, my fault, you, you see how that can play effect a role into now when a young girl is trying to make it in the industry, she feels like she has to go down yes. that over that, that sexual route. Yes. And this is why I wanted to kind of reel it back into uh, Caribbean culture because mm-hmm. is that effect having the same thing on the Caribbean, the, the, the dance hall and the, the drills, obviously, because drill, you know, in Jamaica is a product of um, American drill, like you know what I mean, in, mm-hmm. in America. So, you know, we see the activity, the spike in um, gang activity and stuff like that, which is why they're trying to like, all right, we got to chill with this. So, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I want to bring this back into Caribbean culture. Do you think that does have an effect on the youth? Um, I, again, I guess it's, it's the, it's how it's presented and how it's controlled. As far as the youth go, I, I know I raised mine. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Um, and so I, I, I try to intercept what's coming at them. Well, I tried to intercept when they were younger. So I I do feel that the artists have a responsibility to some extent, but at the same time, they, they want to push their art as well. I don't think the, I, I personally don't think the government should get involved with it. I, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I think they're overstepping. I think it's a gross, um, you know, abuse of authority and they're really just overstepping. When it comes to that, because run the government, we didn't ask y'all to talk about music. But then it kind of goes hand in hand because when the songs is about shooting and all that stuff, mm. and then these kids are shooting people and gang activity in like a Jamaica and Trinidad. Is, is and that stuff like in that. um? Well, I know like in Trinidad, I know it's like a high like. Um, uh huh. So they stuff. have that in yeah. the music. Yeah. Listen, dance I still, all, I still yeah, listen to Tiny Whiny. Dance all, nah, oh, dance all these days is real <laughs> rough. Oh my God. Yeah, so. <laughs> I think it goes hand in hand at the same time. Like we could say, like the government should not be involved, but like mm. I, that's kind of their job when well, you think about it. The thing mm. with Caribbean people and the drill music and thing, right? But when I was back home, when I used to go to school, I would talk about that. Mm-hmm. When schools have fights against each other, they would try doing Bloods and Crips. Mm. They would try practicing stuff that the American kids in do. Guyana. Mm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, why are you doing that? Y'all know the consequences of this. Stop practicing what y'all see on television. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. the only thing. Influence, like, they don't have yeah. better sense. They just see and they will do. That's the only thing with Caribbean kids back home. They don't think. They don't know better. They don't mm-hmm. understand the reason. They don't know the danger behind these things. This is the only thing I can tell y'all about because they really don't know the seriousness behind the blood, the, the stories, these things. This is the only thing but Caribbean kids. Mm-hmm. That's why they be influenced easy back home. Mm. That's the only reason why they want to ban it. Well, I would, I think, I think. Are they trying to ban it in Guyana too? Nah, they would never. 
They yeah. can't control the kids back home. But there's not a serious drilling in them thing. Them guys turning on sound was drilling. They would not <laughs> they didn't understand them thing. They're more dance hall and mm-hmm. soca. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Drill? I don't know, they didn't even know Nipsey hustle that good. Oh, mm-hmm. what am I doing? We always Guyanese people always late with the hip hop thing. Then mm-hmm. I showed in really into the drill thing right now. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing mm-hmm. with Guyana. We always late and last minute. But that's the only thing with Caribbean kids practicing what they see on television or what they hear. They don't know the seriousness behind the Bloods and Crips, the signs and these things. They would see it on TV and on Instagram and they would practice in the signs them and they don't know what the rule sign mean. Mm-hmm. And they need to stop it because they get a self in problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the mm-hmm. only thing I should say I know you from sound, back home. You sound like a true Caribbean per- And look, I, I want to say it's a generational thing, right? First. But I would say, and I hope nobody's <laughs> offended, when you come from a Caribbean background, your parents are on your ass. Mm-hmm. So, like, you, I don't give a fuck what song you it's sing true. in, what dance mm-hmm. you doing. When your fucking parent come around, you, you stop, ain't doing that shit no it. more. It's true, you stop. And now, yeah. with, with the freedom that you get here in America, where yeah. children mm-hmm. control the narrative of how they... How mm-hmm. their parent respond to them, yeah. Yeah. they can decide how they're gonna react to their mom yep. telling you something. You shut up, mom. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't you, you're, not, you're not you're not doing that in Jamaica, you Guyana, anywhere else, because ain't nobody there to save you. You can't. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So when, when, yeah. when, when you bring up the government, the government out here in America, they will protect the child, yep. even though if the child that's, is wrong. You get what I'm saying? There's it. no yeah. government that's gonna help. If anything, the police gonna beat your ass with your parent over there. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think that's a difference. Yep. And even like, even if you look at the educational system, I would feel like, you know, at 16, people in the Caribbean is already for college. Yeah, we mm-hmm. they're they're, they're we're ready. Smarter back home they're, because we learned that's from, a fact. We learned to count mm-hmm. pint stick, pint and to pick and match stick and these things. Very, yeah, very, put, very from we well educated these out there. Kids in school mm-hmm. get laptop and. Preschool laptop exactly. and iPad. Now we know, but writing down mm-hmm. numbers and with pen, pen and paper. It's a huge we difference. We don't know about technology. It's not as big as why most people here pass with flying colors from the Caribbean or something. Because mm. we don't know about them technology. I've seen pe- exactly. plenty of people there's come from actually, the Caribbean and then move to America yeah. and then really Fly, excel. They, they there's excel. actually studies that show, and it goes back to the narrative that mm-hmm. they're trying to push. There's actually studies that show that universities and colleges, they would accept somebody who's from Africa or from the Caribbean before they accept somebody who's like uh, African American. Like, yeah, because it's, it's well, not that's that American culture. It's you know not I mean? that they like shit on back it. home. The technology, the iPad, the the iPhones, and these things. Not everybody is, you know, exactly. like could get that easy. You got uh, work math hard. Book, are you crazy? Math, mm. math I, I think book. that too. What you just said, and I did see that article. I think there is some. Um, and this is why we go back to diaspora wars because mm. you know when you have Black Americans who do feel like they're qualified, but then somebody from another country is able oh. to go in and get accepted, mm. and then those mm. same people that get accepted mm. is now looking down on Black Americans. Well, oh yeah, I just lazy. I, I came over here from my country and I got yeah. accepted. You know what I mean? Mm. So now it's like okay, well now this is another you know obstacle in our way for us. You know that people that are actually qualified. You know what I mean to get into those schools. You know what I mean? So um, everything goes back to if the you even want to dive in deeper into that. Because a lot of, you know, immigrants come to America, right? And this is no no shade on anybody. Let's say I know my potential if I want, let's just say a home health aide, for example, right? I say, oh, I'm qualified and I should be making $30 an hour. But somebody from the Caribbean is willing to do it for 21 and saying I'm lazy. But I'm telling you, hey, you don't fucking take that job. They're paying, they're underpaying you. And, you know, because you come from the Caribbean, you can say, well, $21 is a lot of money to yeah, me. I don't give a money. fuck. And, and then we it. look like we're lazy because we don't want to take the $21, but we know it's worth 30 So sometimes we do have to fucking listen to each other like, yo, hold up. Don't take the $21. Unite with us. Tell them to fuck you. And then we're going to go get this 30 together. I mean- a lot yeah. of people don't talk about that, but that's the real but, reality to some situations. But that's hard for someone who's coming theory, to the country. Like, yeah, it's true because... And they're sleeping on the relative's floor. floor couch, and they're trying to get out and, you know, they can't. So they're like, look, hard. I just got to make money. And they got family yeah. back home that they don't even have a floor. Like, and they have family that home, back home that's the Me, I'm on alone them. here. My mom is in Guyana. My <laughs> father's in Guyana. So I have to fend for myself. I can tell you. I just got hustled. I understand. My own bread. Mm. It's not easy being alone here and your family back home. I mean, I got family here, but yeah, I'm not my dad. Mm-hmm. But my dad, my mom is a single mom, so I grew up with my mom. 
Mm -hmm. So I know, but working since I was 16, since I came out of high school, I never went to university. I never get a chance to do this, but I would when I get a chance to. But you can't put your way, I can't reach. Wherever I have, I'm contented. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. People just just try to come here to have a better life. Mm -hmm. I understand that. If somebody tell me, oh, Duchess, come work here for like $20 uh, $20 an hour or whatever, me, I can. I can for it. I can (laughs) save my money until it reached a freaking million (laughs) dollars. And get my, yeah, that's me. And send it back home. That's what y'all do. Send it back home. Mm-hmm. And that, that's smart. I, I'm not mad at it. I just think that sometimes if you're looking down on me, who's qualified for a certain amount, I, I think that yeah. part is this yeah, that that shouldn't be happening yeah. in that in that whole shit. I understand we all got to get money how we got to yeah. get it. Mm-hmm. So I do want to um, cause I know you had a topic about you know um, uh, hip hop women from back in the day to to now to present. You know the, the difference. You know what I mean, mm-hmm. but. I do want to focus because we have a Caribbean panel, you know what I mean? I feel like mm-hmm. the only outcast in this motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Like. So I do want to, you know, get y'all perspectives on, you know, Caribbean um, female artists from back then to now. Like, what do you think are some of the comparisons, would, would you say? I think there were more raunchier back in the day, to That's be honest. What I'm <laughs> but like, it's Cri- now Caribbean it's all like crazy. Lady Saw, like, have y'all seen Lady as soon as Saw? I'm thinking Saw about that. That was the first I person who like came to my mind. With now Lady it's Saw. more like seen, like obviously Sensia is on the Shea Room nowadays, um, mm-hmm. Jada Kingdom, mm-hmm. all them, but like shout Lady to, shout Saw. Shout out Jada Kingdom. All right, relax. <laughs> <laughs> but Lady Saw, like she really was doing a lot. So what Even about Spice? Too. Spice too. Spice too. But Spice is still here right now. But Lady Saw, like, you know, she's a Christian now. Christian, whatever, mm-hmm. but definitely, I think they were way more raunchier before. Don't to talk be about honest, niggas been jumping on the pooms off the rooftop since '88. What are you talking about? Niggas since '88, right? Before that, way like, before that, yeah, like, before that. But... So, so would would you say it's the same thing? Like, you know, what what do you think is some of the difference between the the Caribbean female artists from in, back in the day to now? Well, I think uh, Lady Saw she opened up a lot of do- she. I think she was mm-hmm. like the first to do a lot of yeah. the stuff that she did. Right, you had other uh, female reggae artists like Patra, and I'm trying to think of some Just... other ones, but they were more. Like, you know, they tried to stay true to the culture, you know, respectful, sweet. you know, and, and um, you know, they didn't want to be looked down on. And Lady Saw was like, nah, I'm, I'm doing yeah, it yeah. with the guys, right? Mm-hmm. So I think the advantage that the new Caribbean artists have is like Shensia and, um, and, and Spice, and they've become um, mainstreamed. Yeah. So they were able to break cultural barriers, right? So whereas um, I don't really, f- I, pr- I, from what I could tell, dance hall and soca and stuff wasn't really listened in American circles as much as it was. It at, back then it wasn't listened as much as as it is now, mm-hmm. and it's because they yeah. were able to break those cultural barriers. Yeah, I don't forget Rihanna, uh, even though Rihanna yeah. did hip hop, definitely Rihanna she still break broke Barbados. Yeah, and she because, yeah, because she became a too, pop. Yeah, but she yeah she, she became, really yeah she became, she kept yeah, her voice though. She yeah. didn't she didn't eliminate her nope. voice. But I feel yeah. like the one thing when they come mainstream, like especially Shensia nowadays, like her music has really changed. So I feel yeah. like sometimes it changes their that. whole switch. Yeah, yeah. And I don't really like that because. What do you mean, she, like, give me an example. She sounds like, a she lot more yeah, Americanized American, now. Yeah. Mm. Like her mm-hmm. music change. sounds closer to pop, hip hop than it does yeah. to. And what I it think used that to. comes from the record label. Yeah, yes. of course. Because sure. they want they want to break into the mainstream. Yep. Unfortunately, mm. that's where the money and is. And she can't control. That's how they blow up. So Paul did the same shit too. Yeah. 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 Nah, Sean Paul oh, is well. one of them. Yeah. Yeah, he was a body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Pull up to the karaoke night. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this last time I want to get to, um, you know, obviously with, you know, one thing I, I, I know about American culture is that we're very, um, we have a large influence, you know, especially like we was on a live stream and people in Africa was talking about, yeah, man, I watch your show over there. You know, we're very big on hip hop. We see I got the movies and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, there was a number that I seen and I, you know, I'm not Caribbean, but I didn't know this was a thing. But apparently the number of, you know, weddings and marriages are, are in a decline in, in Jamaican and other Caribbean cultures. And they contributed a lot to the Western influence, like mm-hmm. the movies, the TV, the visits when they come here. So they're saying there's a de- uh, decrease in marriages um, in the Caribbeans 
what do y'all think is some of the reasons why people are not valuing marriage like that anymore in the Caribbean? This it, is a basic elementary school formula. Like, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? I think, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, just, and it's not to, you know, to say that women shouldn't be doing this and women shouldn't be doing that. But I think the bar has been set so low, you know, and that stems from, um, you know, women really not standing and saying, you know, this is what I want. It's like, you know, oh, yeah, you could just come and live with me. So, yeah, why why would anybody want to get married when I could just live with you? I don't have to commit to you. It's, it's true. so true. A lot of, like, yeah. yeah, I would talk for me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can live with six of you. <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, most people from, you know, Guyana that I would think, everybody live in home first before getting married. Mm-hmm. They're not mm-hmm. getting married. Hardly people... Getting mm-hmm. married, rare. Only people getting married is East Indian people. They mm-hmm. would marry out the daughter at a very young age. The East Indians don't play, and the Muslims back mm. home, wow. they don't play that culture. They don't play with that. Mm. But black people and so back home, everybody's left home. People just get babies out of wedlock or whatever, and that's it. People hardly believe in marriages because they think marriage, being married, don't last long. Mm. Well, I can take it back to something that my mom told me um, years ago, and this is just proof that racism is prevalent regardless of. Mm -hmm. So you would look at Guyana for perfect example, and the narrative that they push out, you would believe the entire country is mostly Indian, Mm -mm. right? That's but there's a lot of black people there. So they pushed it. So this narrative is being pushed globally that black people are not worth as much as other races, whether it's white, um, Indian. And so my mom, you know, she told me, she said the black men in Guyana were saying that they don't want to marry the black women. Yeah, they they want to the marry the Amerindians. Or the Amerindians. Yeah, six and then the black have women black don't cook. So it's just, you know, it's Is just... They saying, a, this, they saying this in Guyana? They're saying yeah. this in Guyana. Like, you would be surprised that as black people, we would go to Guyana and face racism. Yeah, it's right? tough. And, you know, and there are a few <clears> platforms <throat> that I, I watch them very closely, and I'm like, wow, they don't push any content from black people, you know, coming out of Guyana yeah. or any of the Caribbean nations. And, and it's sad. So it's a, so racism doesn't only exist here. here. It exists in the it's Caribbean definitely. too, but just between different um, ethnic I groups. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's, but, but black people are always a common denominator. Right. <laughs> we, <laughs> we don't, we don't back down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so why do y'all think marriage is, is declining in the, in the Caribbeans? Truthfully? I don't know why it's like, cause I don't see what else, what else do y'all have to do except not get married? Like why it's not like you don't have to throw a whole million dollar wedding. The church is down the block from your crib. You can walk there. <laughs> why are we? They getting married, but they just getting divorced too. They used to stay married. Yeah. But that's, it's that true. can be said for any group of people on this yeah, earth. I was going like, to say like it's more. Ma- most marriages, not most. 50% of marriages end in divorce. And of that 50% of divorced people, 70% of the women don't want to get married again, while that number is only 30% for the men. So that gives you something to think about as to why people aren't getting married. So it's the women that don't want to get married. But... I mean, as a woman, when you get married... Don't settle. Don't say as a woman, because I could speak from a friend experience. She's like my sister. Okay, she says she got married in January. She got divorce in March because of the guy. The guy yeah. was a whole pastor's son and he used to sleep with her models behind her back. That's what I'm and saying. As a woman, it's going into a marriage, it's a lot of stuff yeah, that you just got to take on the body. Her. He and I don't know her. if people want to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. And she found out it was heartbreaking and that discouraged her from getting married again. Uh, but I think it is the woman that's that's changing the narrative because mm-hmm. growing up when women wanted to get married, there was more marriages because women would put that pressure on you and you had to go, yeah. you either had to step up to the plate and marry her or she was going to go. Now they don't even want to get married. So it's like, I was just about okay. to say that. Yeah. that. That's why it's less marriages now because I, women I don't, I don't, pressure. I don't think it's that women don't want to get married. I think somehow y'all have managed <laughs> to brainwash women 
Who's is y'all? thinking. Yeah. Men. Oh, man. So that's so, okay. So let me not. So, okay, let me. I'm sorry. So <laughs> he's like, who's y'all? <laughs> um, no, but I think um, the narrative has somehow changed. Mm-hmm. And I don't know where it came from that women feel like they have to compete for a man's affection. So I feel like men are sitting back, like, yeah, I, let me see what you're going to do. For this and that, and like yeah, for and I'm, I'm, right. yeah, and and they and they'll keep that going for y- as long y'all as, compete as you let them. Keep. I don't compete, but what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying that's is what, that I, that's I, I, from no, what I can see. If every woman's saying they don't compete, where's this? Com- com- where's the competition? Like I don't get it. Every woman's, Everyone I'm not competing. I'm not competing. Compete. Yeah, how, how are you guys getting the man? Now, I, I tell you this, and I. When I hear oh, women boy. say this, <laughs> I, I hear women say this. I'm not competing, but competing. other other That's ethnic groups of women are competing, mm-hmm. and the statistics Help. are showing mm-hmm. that they are competing. Like, mm-hmm. so it's like, yes, you can sit at home and do a Sierra's prayer and wait for that right magical man mm-hmm. to come to your doorstep, I or you like go out though. and get the quality. Other, of the man other, other ethnic other. groups are competing in what's for men in that for sense? the, the okay. quali- for the quality of men that they want for them li- their lives they are competing for that man oh, they're showing yeah, why they are the best other cultures of women they don't have to go through i'm sorry but they don't have to go through what black women have to go through that's a lot for, no t- it's t- not there's what? not a there is you cannot find 10 how do i say this I don't want to say Arab and that's wrong, but you can't find 10 Arab women that's going to willingly be married to a broke man for her whole life. That's but, just period, point blank. <laughs> but then, like, see, again. Right. Men, but that's expected of black women. We're supposed to be no, okay no, no, with no. him just being able to pay the light bill for 50 years. No. What? No, no, Come no. Come no. on, bro. Impossible. But, but think about this. I don't I don't want the broke black men, which is understandable. Somebody do. It's just I mean, which is people. understandable. <laughs> Most women don't want the broke black men, right? So that means a bulk of the women want the, the men that's making money, right? So if a bulk of y'all want these small amount of men, y'all gonna have to compete for the men. Yeah, but I'm saying some women, they're not gonna do that. Like they're just gonna. So be- you gonna be alone, or you gonna have to date the broke no. nigga? That's it. No, like, some you're you gonna, gonna as a woman. Hard there's for one somebody thing, who just said who as, y'all. Exactly. <laughs> as a woman, but y'all, y'all did that as, as a woman. woman we need to y'all do that to yourself. Appointed if y'all put, if y'all put these woman, men on a pedestal, we ain't put them on a pedestal. Yes, Y'all I did do. that. Can, what? Can, 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 can we can we spend can we spend a block on the average man? Because a lot of these dudes working in bodegas, they still got wives at home, right? All right. Yeah. Okay. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Because y- again, he's saying y'all putting these men on a pedestal. Mm-hmm. They they working they working at a bodega. And look, of they course. they don't got they don't got one wife. They got multiple wives, and then those wives are still working in the bodega with them. They are cooking. They're mm. cleaning. They're watching the kids. They're not complaining. They may be complaining. I'm not, I'm not sure, but they're there. <laughs> they're there. They're there. Yeah. So when you guys see a man, uh, if y'all saw a black man in the store trying to talk, you a bum ass nigga. You get what I'm saying? But the bodega you know, guy make money. The bodega sure. guy owns the bodega. He, oh, exactly. Like, no, no, that's, no, 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 that's perfectly fine. That's their culture. But, it's American oh culture God. that you're not supposed to live with your family. You see, you're not you see this? It's not all right for me, but it's all right for him. But his wife is still standing with him. Because but they got married not... at a young age. Some of them oh my get married God, young. excuse me. That's their culture. That's, that's their culture. That's their culture. Yeah, that's that's the their grandma culture. lived with her grandma. Okay. So I can like... teach little baby cousin. Yeah. Okay, look, but y'all, uh, y'all you, you guys are expecting so, the so epilogue from a man. I from a man. I them, but I as a person, I as a builder, I like grow with you. You ain't got to get a million dollars. I It don't sound like you saying. I didn't tell me. Now you know. Y'all said, all right? Yeah. I as a builder, I would grow with you. But you have to have a certain amount of money for me for manage. Oh, American bills, like bill phone, bill this, bill. I got a back pad. I got to get liners. I got to get food. You got to help me do something. And I, it's I, not I just, that. I just want to know what they what they doing so much different from us. Because if even if even if y'all talking about cheating, every other man does that. I, what, what, if y'all talking about what, what, what are y'all talk, oh, y'all just talking about finding. I'm just I'm just adding things because I want to know oh. what 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 are the things that that makes. Them so special. And I don't want to sound like oh this. We don't know. Ain't, this I don't know. I've only I've only dated. I've only dated. I don't know. I'm not gonna date anybody. They're providers. I'm, t- I'm, t- I'm t- they're, but they're provided. But y'all don't know that when they come here as immigrants, they get loans off the rip. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but y'all don't put that into perspective, know, right? And, and do y'all also know that black men are are most the the biggest fathers and in, 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 out of all ethnic groups? Mm-hmm. So if you're looking at these same dudes, they might be there, but that don't mean they there. 
That's true. true. But I mean, That's I'm a true. black man fighter. Y'all like using stats. I'm just, I'm just saying. saying. That's true. I'm just saying. Black women most definitely have to jump through more hoops for the same thing that other women of other cultures don't have well, to do. And I think that that's wrong. I think but that's you wouldn't wrong. know you're not a you black woman. You're, you're, not, you're not the well, one who has no, to jump through well, black well, women's well, shoes. Well, I got to jump through? We have to be okay with the fact that he might have... This is back to the first question you asked about the black woman, like dating Caribbean men, why you wouldn't date them. Mm. You have to deal with all these things. Like you got to worry about if he have a baby on his side, if he's dealing with this I, and that. You got to do that with Brad and Chad too. Every, <laughs> but I, Every other I, culture I, does the same I, shit. But they're not, they're not they as emboldened. Exactly. That's exactly no, what I'm trying to say. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Caribbean men can, can I, can I who why? come home on Friday and be like, I'll see you Monday can, when can, I get home from can work. Can I please tell you why? And they're not going to work. Because right. their women are not saying the shit on, on me like you guys are. Their women, 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 their that's what I'm saying. Okay. They are fucking everybody too. They are. We can have but a they're not we so bold faced with it. It's not no, about that. They're not, not bold faced so with it. Face. They're not talking about it. Come on, these niggas, it's fucking their neighbors. You, you, they, what are you talking about? They, 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 they do right? come on TikTok if and tell all they did that, just like that. Not really. But no, no. no. <laughs> the thing is, I promise you, if we had a panel of, of, of all Hispanic women or all Indian women or all Asian women, they would have the same exact stories I have. And I think sometimes we get too caught up in, oh, well, if he's paying my bills, it's okay if he cheat. You know what I mean? As long as he pay, because mm-hmm. that's the first thing. And I'm not saying that y'all sh- women shouldn't focus on it, but there's other things to a man that I think that y'all should prioritize instead of, can he pay all of my goddamn bills and but I don't no have to do anything? Said, but like, the average like, woman doesn't want a man to pay exactly. yeah. every single that one of her bills. No. We just don't want to feel like we got to do our whole lives by exactly. ourselves and then come home and still have to do your life too. Because you that's the difference. Like, if he paid everything for you, you can't do nothing. You gotta be inside. Exactly. You want to take control. And then I, I feel like y- take y'all also want y'all want a traditional woman. Y'all don't want to be traditional. Y'all want me to sit at home, cook, clean, raise all the kids, and go to work. It's not happening. Real men don't like want that. that. Real men know that we gotta help our Period. women. Real men know that. I like the statement. Just song and good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, listen. I think it's a little bit hard to judge, especially in American culture when inflation is so ridiculous like you know what i mean and mm-hmm. and you know i always say this again in new york in new york making 100k is the equivalent of making thirty six thousand dollars. like that ain't help that ain't supporting no family so now me i'm thinking 100k is good like you know what i'm saying no i gotta make 200k just to support like my wife and one kid maybe like you get what i'm saying so mm-hmm. it is you know society is different because mm-hmm. we talk about our grandfathers that nigga was working in a factory and he was able to support eight families off his it one paycheck. Good. That's it's different. Like, you get what I'm saying? Now you cannot do that. Like, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I think the guys that, you know, the women are put on a pedestal, the, the, the 10% of guys that are the high earners, they're getting women left and right. And those women know the type of col- the caliber of man they are and they're doing whatever they can to secure that man. When you're sitting back and saying, well... LeBron James, he's supposed to know who the fuck I am, and I ain't supposed to do nothing. No, Savannah, she worked, she worked hard to get LeBron, even though it was and high school, him, and keep and him, keep they, him. like you know what I mean. So yeah, but she still was, she still worked hard. Yeah. She knew, she knew who he was going to be. Like well, you know, I'm I'm saying, saying, I know who he was in high school. Yeah, yeah. 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 She knew who he was. Like, you know what LeBron did in the, in like in the back end. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. But she but said why, because he's LeBron. That's the thing. She knew where he was going to go. Yeah, and she could handle that. So. I guess. I don't know. I mean, I'm not yeah, that's true. It shouldn't but, have to always be a LeBron for a woman to put effort in. That's what I'm that's mm-hmm. my point. Mm-hmm. We are we all are average. There's a lot more average people than mm-hmm. successful rich people. Yep. And we gotta I, I hate to because people seem to hate the to, to be regular. You get what I'm saying? Or be the average. Yeah. But we gotta understand our mindset. Like, yo, my my wage is this, and I'm not gonna expect my woman to fucking Give me a Rolls Royce for my birthday. You get what I'm yeah. saying? Or mm-hmm. and she better not damn sure ask me for one because I ain't got it. That's a fact. Yeah, though, so. that's not true. It's so, true. so going back to the original talk, we just got all over the place. Thanks. <laughs> Do y'all think? Um, it will get to a point back in Caribbean culture where marriages will start to be a thing, or do you think that? Because I read a stat about you know 
in Jamaica, 85% of the women are born, I mean, all the children are born out of wedlock. You know what I mean? And we, mm. obviously, we can see what's going on in American, American culture where we have the rise of single parent household and we see the, the negative impact it is having on our community. So how do you mm-hmm. think we could get back collectively to value and family and marriage? I don't Good know. Question. I feel like everybody just needs to find somebody that's on their same wavelength, that wants the same thing that they want. If you want somebody that's going to buy you a Rolls Royce, don't be with the person that can't afford a Rolls Royce. Like everybody, Don't go after the guy with the Rolls Royce if you're not in Rolls Royce budget. I'm, I'm sorry. Wait, you what do you mean by that? that? If your budget is not Rolls Royce, stop looking for the nigga that's going to get Okay, you but there's, there's probably somebody who wants somebody to... Who probably and wants you're going to be me. used. That's why I'm, I'm trying to inform yeah. you guys. I'm trying to I'm Yeah, trying but to if you're you going guys. into a situation like that, you know that you're broke. You know he got money. You want him to spend the money on you. You know the situation that you're going into. You know that that's a sugar baby, sugar daddy relationship, whatever you want to call it. You know that going into it. I'm just saying the average woman does not want that. She just wants to feel comfortable and secure in her man. That when she picks up the phone and calls him like, yo, da, 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 he going to say, okay, I got it. Click. That's what the average woman wants. Well, she better walk into reality. That's not a solution. You can't just act for something that's going to happen. Word. But the littlest thing, <laughs> the little little thing. No, no, yeah, right. say little thing. I heard Rolls Royce. No, she said the average woman. She's yeah, about average the average woman, woman need to ask for average things. That's what I'm yeah. saying. That's what I'm. Oh. She's she calling said, your phone yeah. to ask for something average. Like what? Mm-hmm. Like let's say she just said, "Oh, my! I just got into an accident. By the boom, by the boom. I need to change my tire, and it's." However much a tire costs. I don't know. I don't have a car. Well, I got you, babe. Yeah. Okay, okay. So what's the AAA. issue? <laughs> I heard yeah, the on. issue is I don't think as a collective y'all are speaking like that. Like that's I, why well, I well okay. So I, I have to think about the question because right. I like to I like to think before I speak. Right. That's what you're mm-hmm. I think the way we could get back to that is that we need to get back to valuing traditional values. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Everything is so. Again, back to what we're seeing on social media. Everybody got money. Everybody, you know, everybody, everybody's like, I got money. So everybody's looking for a man <laughs> that could do, you know, they give lying, them $100 y'all. nails, pay for their $1,000 wigs when, and, and I speak about this all the time, and, and it's something that I, I enforce with, you know, with people who I engage with, just because, and this applies to men and women, just because someone is financially abundant, it doesn't mean that they're not spiritually and emotionally bankrupt. So mm-hmm. all the money in the world, they will not treat you the way you mm-hmm. need to be treated when you have a flat tire and you on the side of the road. It doesn't matter if he has a million dollars in the bank. You want somebody that's going to be there for you and who's going to show up for you. And once we start putting those traditional values back in perspective, mm-hmm. that's when traditional families will come back. Mm. And I I think it all comes from how the person was brought up. If they were, you know, like, a f- if you grew up in a house with family or if you grew up in a house with a single mom or if you grew up mm-hmm. in a house with, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. not everybody. You have to be taught how to love. You have to be taught how to love. You have to be taught how to love. Yeah, because. If you see your, your, your mom and dad together, me, I ain't nobody. It all mm-hmm. comes from trauma. It all comes from how you grew up. Right. So that's the only way you would know how to pick a man or how to, yeah. you know, ask or how to... I do hear a lot of women say they're afraid of marriage because they've seen their parents' relationship as well. It all comes from how you were brought up. Yeah. So you have to you heal. Have to yeah. So that's another so topic yes. that's taboo in the mm. black yes. community. With mm. women. Mm. American and Caribbean yes. and African all yes. alike. Yes. But, There's a lot of deep-rooted trauma yeah. in our community. Right. It is. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, the mental health of our communities... Yes needs to be addressed. We have to attack the problem Thanks. at the root. That too. Mm-hmm. And, that, and a lot of things are going to trickle down and start working themselves yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to go to therapy. Exactly. Nobody mm-hmm. wants to talk about it. It's on the hush hush. Right. You know, we, 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 we want to self-medicate and, you know, drink and, you know, when, when you're having yeah. problems, or instead running. of healing your trauma that will allow you to show up. Yeah in a healthy fashion, in a relationship to set loving boundaries, not only for yourself, but with the person, person. that you're bringing into There's your life. Because around. contrary to popular belief, showing up in a relationship is not 50-50. Mm-hmm. You have to show up 100%. Yeah. And yeah. you can't right. do that if you're broken and broken. traumatized. Facts. Facts. Mm-hmm. So everything that we talked about, it has to. we have to start addressing the, the, the community trauma. And mm-hmm. I don't know 
that's a big problem to it tackle. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big, 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 big problem. I feel like it's tackle. hard to admit yeah. when somebody hurts you, hurted you, or hurt you, because it makes you, <laughs> it makes you feel like it makes you feel weak. It makes you feel mm-hmm. like, how did I let this happen? Even if it was completely out of your control. So yeah. I feel like that's why sometimes it's hard for black people to like take a step back and really have to look and self Because we're always in the defense. And it's, yeah. and it's so yeah. much trauma. Mm-hmm. It's not even just the trauma of your life. It's the trauma of being black every mm-hmm. single day. It's just mm-hmm. every time you open your phone, something new, something yeah. new, something new. And it's just like your brain never gets a chance to just relax mm-hmm. and be calm and not have the anxiety in the back of it. Yeah. But that's why you got to go heal. Yeah. That's you got to heal first. Yeah. yeah. And and I, um, I'm glad you, you said that because, you know, that sounds like a reasonable solution. Like, I mean, I'm not saying it's easy, but yeah, you know, no. it's something that we could all work towards collectively. Um, mm-hmm. Again, I uh, appreciate y'all for pe- being on the panel. Again, let them know they can follow you at. Um, Instagram, A-K-Y-A-M-A-R-I-A, and YouTube, TikTok, all the same thing. Okay. T-I-A dot C-H-U-N-G, Tia Chung on Instagram and TikTok. At Dutch Banks, D-U-T-C-H-B-A-N-K-S, Instagram, TikTok, everything. That's hot. Diamond underscore natural, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook. Mm-hmm. Listen, if y'all enjoyed the conversation, hit the like button. If y'all didn't enjoy it, hit the like button. Either way, <laughs> 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 subscribe if y'all haven't subscribed to that notification bell. Yo, our second YouTube channel, Daily Rabbit Crew, Crew Clips, mm-hmm. um, short form content, you know, all the good stuff over there. Yeah, we're doing that. The main channel, we're just gonna stick to the, the full episodes, the live streams, mm-hmm. all the other content that we're doing. Cop the merch, you know, the mm-hmm. crew that code. Be- and before we leave, real quick, I mean, is it is it chicken curry or curry chicken? I don't, I don't know. Like, <laughs> curry chicken. Everybody curry in the chicken. world know <laughs> it's curry, curry chicken. Chicken. <laughs> the cor- chicken, the chicken or the curry or whatever. Is that still curry? Is it the same thing? Curry so chicken curry, 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 same thing? No, 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 no. The type of chick, whatever chicken it is, comes first. If it's going to be it's jerk chicken. Barbecue Brown chicken, chicken, curry chicken, of- and the story, oh, man. Yeah. Like, I got it. <laughs> and the story, man. Curry. What the hell is chicken curry? And I- <laughs> you naming the kind of curry now? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this is chicken curry. Like, damn. Damn. Ever meet in the curry. But y'all don't argue about how Guyanese curry tastes good, though. Beto. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's the end. That's cool. the end. No, no, don't, don't lie. That's it. Don't lie. Everybody know that. No, no, no. Chicken curry it's because chicken curry. Ours the reason y'all had to rename it was because I was so good. No, we yeah. had to rename it. That's why you had to call it chicken yeah. curry. Yeah. 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 Because it's the best. Guyana it's best. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no confusion. Yeah. Everybody knows the Jamaica best curry spot in Trinidad. It, it's Trin City. All y'all the same. It's Queens. Go. Where are y'all the same? No, it's a bill. It's a bill. Linda's. It's a bill. Never heard of it. Anyway. Don't do that. Don't do that. Trin City. Our home coke the best. No, 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 no. Guyana curry. If you didn't bring a sample, 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 I know I still don't know. We can have a cookie. 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 I have Bunjay McCurry. Bunjay is nice. Second is crazy. He's like, Jamaica second. Making up nuts. He's like, Guyana, Jamaica, Trinidad. Y'all don't know why. It's not even on the list, bro. Nah, Jamaica is definitely on the bottom. Yeah, if we're talking about curry, curry or insane. Jamaica in a second, I'm sorry. Nah, well, and curry, maybe. No. Do you but eat not it? Food? No. Hey, 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 not hey, food? Hey, 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 food? Hey, 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 food? Haiti is number one. No, you only eat food. That's Haiti is number one. Listen, we gotta get up out of here, man. We gonna have to talk about this on another show. We gonna have to have a whole show. The Thanksgiving. The Thanksgiving edition. Like, yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, and put all the curries in a different bowl and see if you can tell who's.